Hello, everyone. This is Jason from LSAR. Uh, I just wanted to put together a short video for you folks in regards to sending out uh, fillable disclosure forms or forms from uh, Instanet to your clients. And what will happen is you can go ahead and email these off and they'll be able to fill out those disclosures such as a seller's property disclosure statement and what it'll do is when they save it it'll update it in real time on your end for you to be able to interact with that form saving time as well so we'll go ahead and get started here um, just bear with me and first thing you're going to want to do is if you're logged into paragon through uh, you know your desktop or device you can always go to resources instant that now, if you have an iPhone and you have Instant app on your phone, you can always access it there as well. But at this instance, we're gonna go to resources, click on Instant. I already have Instant open uh, for time saving sake. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna choose from this menu here. I'm gonna hit this little triple stack hamburger patty pile right there. Open up my settings and my tools and I'm gonna go to forms. So when I click on forms, what I'm gonna see is a list of folders with miscellaneous forms and whatnot. Um, you know, you might have office, office template where that disclosure list as well. But in this instance, I'm gonna to go to Minnesota Residential Forms. Um, I'm looking for the property disclosure. So I'm gonna scroll down here and I can see disclosures. If not, you can go up here in this box and start typing in, you know, disclosure. And it'll, and it'll start pulling up by keyword specific forms and whatnot um, because I already know that, that exists there. I'm going to go ahead and just scroll on down to it and as you can see I have this disclosure statement sellers property disclosure statement. Now what I'm going to do is click on that file as you can see I have one here but in this instance because I have a new form I'm going to go up to the top here and click on add. So when I click on add I'm going to go ahead and click on create new standalone form. So once I click on that, it'll actually open up the form for me to be able to interact with it. Now, once it pops up here, as you can see, you'll have a list of icons up here telling you whatnot. If you're just seeing the icons and you're not seeing like files of the word font or the word clause, go ahead and zoom in and zoom, go ahead and zoom out, minimize it a little bit, and then you should see these pop up. If not, you'll just have the icons and you can go from there as well. So what I'm going to do in this instance is I'm going to go to file and I'm going to go down here to send. Now if you need to make any notes or anything like that on this form, um, you can always go down to markup and documents right here and it'll allow you to mark that up. In this instance, we're just going to email this out. So I'm going to go ahead and click on email. It's going to open up a new window here. So when I have this new window open, what I'm going to do is fill in the recipient's name. It's optional. Um, I'm going to choose recipient email. We're going to go ahead and choose my email here at the LSAR office. I'm going to want to make sure that I have send as a link checked here. Um, and then the next important thing I want to do here is as you can see where it says allow editing of forms. You're going to want to check this box. And as you can see, when I check that box, the expiration date, a red asterisk appeared next to it. So instead of recipient email being the only required field, expiration date is now a required field as well. So go ahead and put a date in there. I'm just gonna put the August 29th. You'll see it update. We can double check. You can check on your items here and it'll actually show you which forms are tied to it. Um, the next thing we want to do, if we go back to information, fax back if you have a cover sheet, um, you can always check this and it'll send a cover sheet out with it for them to fill out and they can use that cover sheet to send it back via fax um, and it'll actually come back into an email and update this form as well. But in this instance, we're going to send it as a link, we're sending it to an email and when everything's filled out here, we're going to go up here to send and click send. Now you'll see this green box pop up that says your email has been sent. Now the next step is very important on your end as well. Once you get that confirmation that the email has been sent, you need to exit this form. So you can go up here to file and go to exit. 
Now, the reason you need to do this is because when they get that form sent to them and they have it in their possession, when they're filling it out, you need to be out of the form. If you're in the form, it kind of confuses the, the system and it doesn't know that somebody else is in there trying to actually update the form. So at this point, make sure you X out. I always like to kind of go back to this dashboard here or the transaction or one of them and then go back to these forms. It kind of helps refresh it here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go over to my email. Um, now this is what you're gonna see on your client side. Your client's gonna receive an email saying, transaction desk form invitation sent from myself to myself. So in this email, this is what they're gonna see. Now they'll have instructions, click the links before you've been granted permission to edit these forms. Now what I'm gonna do is, you know, as a client, I'm going to click on this. This is the email that they're going to receive to fill it out. So as you can see, the form's in front of me. Um, once it pops up here, it's the same form. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I can either click on this calendar or type in a date. We'll go ahead and do the 12, we'll do page one through 67, you know, whatever's relevant there. Um, you know, we can do one, two, three, four, you know, system street, um, city of robots, um, county of, you know, whatever you want to put in there. And as you can see, as I'm interacting with it, I'm checking boxes. Yes, yes, no's, no's, just kind of blindly doing it here for instructional sake and yes yes no we'll put some jargon in here um put some jargon in here as well fill out a few things here yep that's good stuff yes no now once they're done interacting and filling this form out on their end this next step is just as important as you exiting out of the form on your end so what i'm going to want to do here is i'm going to want to go back up they're going to go back up to file and I'm going to go to save and I'm going to click save. Now they can save it as a PDF and download it and may email it back to you. But if in real time, this is the best way to go. I'm going to go ahead and save. We're going to click save. You'll see this window up here on the right say form saved. And what I'm going to do after that, once that says it's saved, I'm going to go down to here and what they're going to want to do is click on exit. So once I click exit, this window will pop up that says it's important very important that this window they see this window that means that they have completed it and everything is updated on their end um, if they don't they're missing a step they need to go back and exit now just going up and hitting the x here and exiting out isn't going to update that form it has to be that process right there save and then exit out of the form itself in the program now once that's been done I myself can go back to my forms. Um, I already had the forms here open. As you can see, I'm clicking on forms. Um, so transaction forms, back individual forms. I'm gonna go down to Minnesota residential forms again, where I created that form in that folder. So I'm gonna scroll on down to the disclosure, Stellar's property disclosure statement. I'm gonna go ahead and click on it because it's a placeholder folder. And as you can see, I have one, two, three, four system street, the one I was just working on. Now, if I click on it, <clears throat> it'll allow me to go into this form again and review the changes that have been made or the updates. Now, as you can see, it filled in the date. Um, once I put this address in, each page at the top, will it'll automatically fill in anything associated with it. But as you can see, all the interactions I had with it, with the check marks and the uh, jargon I was putting through there have been updated through the system. So at this point, now that it's been updated on your end, you have the option to, like I said, you can either save it, that's already been done, but you can actually go ahead and add it to a transaction if you already have that file created, or you can start a new one with it. You can also just go right through it and create a signing if you need to authorize it or anything from that end. But that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, make sure if you have, you know, it's pretty uh, easy as pie, if you will. But make sure if you have any questions or any issues with it to uh, go ahead and reach out to me here at the uh, LSAR office um, or go ahead and shoot me an email, um, support at lsarealtours.com and I'll be more than happy to assist. Um, thank you for your time and hopefully this will help you out. Have a great day.